do you ever feel like you can't escape your own thoughts? Maybe your mind is just spinning out of control and you just have a lot of thoughts. We're going to talk about how to calm down your chaotic mind today. And this is part five in a five-part series of how to build yourself up. In part one, I shared five ways to develop a positive thinking. In part two, I talked about affirmations. Part three was about self-worth. Part four, last time, we discussed how to reach any goal. And it wasn't one of those smart goal-setting things. It was a little bit different. So if you missed any of those, go back and listen to them. Uh, But you can listen to this one, didn't build on them. So you can listen to this one first if you want. Because a lot of people experience chaos in their own minds. And that can make things difficult when you're trying to work towards your goals. So the next time your mind is filled with confusion and lots of thoughts and you seem to be bouncing around everywhere, try one of these five creative ways to alleviate stress. And stress is one of those wonderful topics that we'll be talking about in upcoming uh, podcasts. So number one, you want to keep your mind busy. Now, wait a minute, Colleen, you just said, I, my mind is busy. It's full of thoughts. Ah, but there's a delicate balance between keeping your mind busy, but not overcrowding it with a jumble of thoughts. So we're talking about occupying your mind in a focused manner so that it doesn't wander. But that's a whole different ballgame when you start stressing out about an endless to-do list. It becomes information overload. So the night before, so tonight, you're going to sit down and write three to five things that you want to accomplish tomorrow morning. I always do it the night before because if I don't, I'm up all night thinking about it, right? So I do it the night before so that I can get a good night's sleep. And then, here's the kicker, on that list of three to five, no more than three to five, I want you to have one thing on your list that is only purely for fun. So not only will this keep your mind busy without making you stressed, you can have some fun tomorrow whether you want to or not, because it's on your list and you planned it. Now, the key is don't put it first. (laughs) I mean, you could if it's something that's going to be short. Um, But you want to reward yourself with that fun thing after you've done two or three other things. So keep the list short, three to five things tops, and one of them has to be for fun. Number two, help somebody. Why? Well, think about it. When's the last time you extended a helping hand to someone who needs it? something happens in your brain, and we're going to be talking about this a lot in coming weeks. Something happens in your brain when you help someone else, when you go into helper mode. Because first of all, the focus is on other people and not on yourself. So you're you're taking your mind off your list. But more important than that, you are experiencing a these feelings of love, joy, gratitude, appreciation, and When you're feeling those feelings, your body releases. Okay, so you see, every feeling is associated with a certain chemical or hormone in your body, okay? So when you feel stressed, your body's going to react one way. If you're afraid, your body's going to act a certain way. If you're feeling thoughts of love, your body reacts a certain way because your brain tells your body what to do, releases their hormones, and those hormones help you do that thing, right? Tells you to blush. Do Do people even blush anymore? That's a question. Email me the last time you blushed. Um, So anyway, when you have those feelings of love, your body is going to release um, like dopamine and oxytocin, vasopressin, human growth hormone even. And because you're in in this love and growth and openness type of thing. But when you are in a lack of love, when you're in stress, your body does just the opposite. It It releases these horrible things like cortisol, norepinephrine, cytokines, histamine, those types of things. Your body gets very protective because it's stressed out. So not only by helping someone else, not only you not focusing on all the chaos in your own mind, your body is actually releasing these awesome hormones that are going to make you feel better. So that's the other reason we want to put something fun on your list. All right, so that's number two, helping other people. Number three, find a creative hobby. And we all have a creative side. There was an interview I did before. I'll put the link in the show notes uh, about, yes, you do have a creative side. When you were a child and you put a tent, you made this big fort in your house. Well, it was a blanket, but not to you. It was a fort. So we all have that creative side. And somewhere, someone told you you weren't creative and that locked into your mind and you, well, I'm just not creative. So 
I had a great professor. I went back to college when I turned 50 to get a degree in graphic design and 2D and 3D animation. And I, did, I can draw stick figures. And she taught me how to draw. And she goes, no, you're better than that. I said, I'm just not creative. She goes, somewhere somebody told you you weren't. I guarantee you, you are. And she was right. It was just reigniting that creative side. So picking up a creative hobby will use a different part of your brain. And it'll be a nice, healthy break from the usual grind. And it could be one of those fun things you put on your list. Plus, hobbies allow you to expand your intelligence with new forms of thinking. So all the way around, a creative hobby is really good for you. Number four, take care of your body. Your mind and your body are working hand in hand quite often. So if you aren't caring for your physical being, you may notice more stress going on in your head because there's negative stress and then there's what's called eustress, which is actually spelled E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, eustress. So that is the stress that's good for you. That's how I remember it, (laughs) but it's not how it's spelled. It's spelled (laughs) E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, but it's stress that's good for you. That's like working out, going for a walk, um, putting stress on your body, not on your mind. You're going out and taking a walk, um, taking a nice bath. Um, There are just lots of ways to re-energize your body, which helps take that chaos out of your mind because the brain and the body are working together. And number five, last but not least, connect with other human beings. Helping others is one way, but connecting with other people, this is totally different. Both are essential aspects of cultivating an active, healthy mind. And as humans, we need socialization. We need physical contact. You know, I don't know if you remember before I was talking about that study they did with uh, monkeys where they didn't touch them. And they became uh, very withdrawn and and, uh, very isolated. And then, but when they did get with others, they ended up fighting. (laughs) So it's important to have that physical touch in our lives. And gosh, 2020, we didn't have a lot of that, did we? So we thrive when we are part of a tribe, for lack of a better thing, to call it part of a group, part of a friendship, part of a community. And we crave human interaction time face-to-face, not just online. So make sure you get out there and get social. Every laugh, every little bit of conversation, that will help your mind in countless ways. So call a friend get together, have lunch in the park, which it's December right now. So (laughs) when I'm recording this, actually it's 75 degrees here in Texas on on, uh, November, what is this? November 30th, actually, when I'm recording this. Um, But you can still, it doesn't have to be a big production, doesn't have to be a party. Just the goal of getting together with another human being and shaking hands, giving a hug, reaching out and touching somebody's forearm. Uh, depending on how well you know someone, right? So having that human connection uh, is going to be an amazing way to help your brain. So these are many ways to calm your mind. Which one of these five are you going to try? Which one do you think will work for you first? Now, as I mentioned in upcoming podcasts, we're going to turn our discussions much more about your heart and your brain and your body and how to be happy right now. I can't wait to share this new and life-changing information with you. I'll see you next time.